Welcome to sample problem two in our module six on hypothesis testing. This is kind of subtitle learning by watching, which is brought to you by the infamous Dr. Dog. Now, this is a problem about wildlife, and my two cousins, Bubba and Cooter, who are near and dear to my heart, have just opened a meat packaging business down around Shelbyville. Their specialty, of course, is meat from the albino hunt banded Hungarian aardvark. Seems that there's a rogue population of these running loose in Texas. Bubba claims that the average dress weight for an albino banded Hungarian aardvark is 25.2 pounds. Cooter, of course, disputes this claim as being too high. Cooter has taken a random sample of 16 albino banded Hungarian aardvarks and discovered that the average dress weight of the sample is 24.1 pounds with a standard deviation of 1.4 pounds. Cooter wants to test Bubba's claim at a 95% level of confidence. Perform this test for him. Now, friends, before we move on, let's read on. The claim was 25.2 pounds. A random sample of 16 had a X bar of 24.1 with S of 1.4, and we have a 95% level of confidence. And we're going to test some things on these albino band, Hungarian banded aardvarks. Now, the step one is to develop the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis that Mu is 25.2, this is Bubba's claim. And the alternate hypothesis is what Cooter thinks about Bubba's claim. Bubba claims it's 25.2. Cooter thinks this is too high. Now, that claim that this is too high translates to Cooter thinks that Mu is less than 25.2. Now listen again, 25.2 is too high translates to an alternate hypothesis that Mu is less than 25.2. Now our challenge now is to find the critical value boundary. Since we have 16 in the sample, it's a small sample, 95% level of confidence. Uh, we have uh, 15 degrees of freedom and it's a one-tail test. Well, let's continue on. We want to draw the picture. Uh, we know that alpha is 100 minus 95%, so we're going to look for a critical value of an alpha of 5% with 15 degrees of freedom, which is going to be 1.753. We know it's negative because the rejection region follows the direction of our error here in the alternate hypothesis. So it's out here on the left below the mean, so it's going to be negative. This is the reject region, values below negative 1.753. This is the fail to reject region. Now let's go on and calculate step four. Our critical value, of course, is negative 1.753. Now in our test statistic, that's always the effect size divided by the standard error. The effect size in this case is the, the X bar value, 24.1 minus the claim, 25.2, all of that divided by S, which is 1.4, over the square root of N, which is 16. You'd subtract these two, you take the square root, then divide 1.4 by 4, divide the top value by that amount, and you should come up with negative 3.14. So we look at where that falls. Does negative uh, 3.14 fall out here, or does it fall down into the reject region? Well, it fell into the reject region, so our decision is to reject H0. Now we need to put this in words with a written statement. Based upon a random sample of 16 albino banded Hungarian aardvarks conducted by Cooter, the true mean dress weight is less than the claim of 25.2 pounds made by Bubba. Sorry, Bubba, but you're wrong. Now, Cooter now goes out to buy a case of Bud Light to celebrate his success Bubba also buys a case to drown his disappointment. Hope you enjoyed this sample problem. We love these albino Hungarian banded aardvarks. Cooter is busy celebrating his success while Bubba drowns in sorrow. We'll be doing several problems using these uh, albino Hungarian banded aardvarks as victims of our statistical studies. Uh, this rogue population in Texas is just going wild. And what an opportunity to study statistics. Hope you enjoyed this sample problem.